Welcome to an introduction to multiplying radical expressions. To multiply two radical expressions with the same index, multiply the coefficients together and multiply the radicands together, then simplify. So looking at our notes, notice how the index n is the same, and therefore we multiply the coefficients together, which would be p and q, the numbers outside the radicals. Then we multiply the radicands together, which in this case are u and v, the numbers underneath the radicals, and then we would simplify. Looking at a couple examples here, notice how we have the square root of two times the square root of three. We have the product of two square roots, so the index is two, so the indexes are the same. The coefficients would be one, and therefore we can just multiply the radicands together, which in this case would be two times three, we can tell this won't simplify, and therefore our product is square root six. Next we have three cube root five times four cube root seven. Once again, notice how the index is the same, and therefore we multiply the coefficients together, which in this case would be three times four. Then we multiply the radicands together, which would be five times seven, once again, this is not going to simplify, and therefore this gives us 12 times the cube root of 35. Now let's take a look at some more examples. Here we have the square root of 15 times the square root of six. We have the product of two square roots, where the index is two, so the index is the same. The coefficients are one, so once again, we can just multiply the radicands together, which would be the square root of 15 times six. Now 15 times six is equal to 90, so we could write this as the square root of 90, and then simplify this by determining the prime factorization of 90, but a lot of times it'll be easier to find the prime factorization of 15 and six separately, and then just write all the prime factors under the square root. What I mean by that is 15 is equal to three times five, and six is equal to two times three. And therefore, the prime factorization of 15 times six, notice would have one factor of two, two factors of three, and one factor of five. So we'd have two times three times three times five. Remember this will simplify if we have any perfect square factors and because we're looking for perfect square factors, we want to circle groups of two equal factors, which we have here. Three times three or three squared is a perfect square factor. So the square root of three squared, or nine, is equal to three, so this simplifies to three times the square root of two times five, which is 10. Next we have the cube root of 18 times the cube root of 60. Again, the index is the same. The coefficients are one, so we multiply the radicands, which would be the cube root of 18 times 60. Again, we could find this product and then find the prime factorization, but I think it's a little bit less work if we find the prime factorization of 18 and the prime factorization of 60 separately and then just combine the prime factorizations. So 18 would be equal to two times nine, nine is equal to three times three, 60 is equal to two times 30, 30 is equal to two times 15, and 15 is equal to three times five. And therefore, the cube root of this product is equal to the cube root of the prime factorization of this product, which would be the cube root of, we do want to write these in order from least to greatest, so notice how we have one, two, three factors of two, which you notice will be a perfect cube factor, and we also have one, two, three factors of three and a factor of five. Again, because we have a cube root, we're looking for perfect cube factors, so we'll group the factors into groups of three, which we see here and here. 
So this is two cubed and this is three cubed. So the cube root of two cubed would be one factor of two. The cube root of three cubed would be one factor of three. And then we still have times the cube root of five. So this simplifies to six times the cube root of five. Now we have three times the square root of 12 times five times the square root of 63. They're both square roots. So we begin by multiplying the coefficients together, which would be three times five. And then we have the square root of 12 times 63. Well, 12 times five is equal to 15. We do want to simplify this square root. So now we'll find the prime factorization of 12 and 63. Well, 12 is equal to two times six. Six is equal to two times three. 63 is equal to seven times nine and nine is equal to three times three. So again, we do want to put these prime factors in order from least to greatest. So we have one, two factors of two, and we have one, two, three factors of three, and a factor of seven. So because we have a square root and the index is two, we'll put the equal factors in groups of two here are two twos, that's a perfect square factor. And here are two threes, that's a perfect square factor. So simplifying, we have the 15 here, and then we have the square root of two squared simplifies to one factor of two. The square root of three squared simplifies to one factor of three. And then we still have the square root of three times seven, which is 21. So we have 15 times two, that's 30, times three, that's 90 times the square root of 21. Next we have negative two times the fourth root of 40 times seven times the fourth root of 18. So the index is the same. We multiply the coefficients together first. Negative two times seven is negative 14. And then we'd have the fourth root of 40 times 18. And again, we'll find the prime factorization of 40 and 18 separately, rather than finding this product and then determining the prime factorization. So 40 is equal to four times 10, four is equal to two times two, and 10 is equal to two times five. And then we have 18, which is equal to two times nine, and nine is equal to three times three. So we have negative 14 times the fourth root of this product in prime factored form, where we'd have one, two, three, four factors of two, which notice will be a perfect fourth root. And then we have two factors of three and one factor of five. So we're looking for groups of four. Here's a group of four twos. So this will simplify, but nothing else simplifies. So we have negative 14 times the fourth root of two to the fourth would be one factor of two. And then we have times the fourth root of what's not circled. Three times three times five is 45. So notice how whatever we end up circling simplifies. Whatever we don't circle, stays underneath the radical. So we finally have negative 28 times the fourth root of 45. Let's take a look at one more example. Here we have negative square root six times negative three square root six. So if it's helpful, we could think of this first square root as negative one times square root six. In this form, we multiply the coefficients together. Well, negative one times negative three is positive three. And then we have the square root of the product of the radicands, which would be six times six. Now this isn't in prime factored form, but because we're looking for a perfect square of factors or groups of two equal factors, this will simplify perfectly. 
So here we have three times the square root of six squared would just be one factor of six. Notice how this simplifies perfectly because nothing else is left underneath the square root. And therefore the final result is just positive 18. Next we'll take a look at multiplying radicals that contain variables. I hope you found this helpful.